So a chemotherapy free treatment approach in APL, obviously, uh, to sort of uh, give a very clear and accurate answer would be the incorporation of frontline arsenic trioxide uh, based uh, therapy in these patients. And as you know, uh, our intravenous arsenic trioxide is actually FDA approved already in patients with uh, a sort of standard risk acute probiotic leukemia, those who have a white blood cell count of less than 10 uh, times 10 to power 9 per liter at diagnosis. Right. And these patients, basically, uh, intravenous arsenic trioxide uh, together with ATRA is used uh, uh, with the induction consolidation regimen and maintenance treatment is actually not quite necessary in this population already. And we are actually already achieving a chemotherapy-free approach uh, in a frontline setting. In higher-risk uh, patients who have a white count of uh, more than 10, um, although it's not yet FDA approved, but then uh, there's a lot of data showing that intravenous arsenic trioxide with ATRA, uh, with chemotherapy, of course, uh, would improve the outcomes. Uh, the important question would be, could we do chemotherapy-free in these patients uh, uh, with higher risk uh, APL or patients with high white count APL? Uh, I would say um, we may not come we may not completely eradicate the need for chemotherapy, but, but then we can reduce the intensity of the chemotherapy. For example, our work with oral arsenic trioxide uh, with ETRA, even in higher risk patients who have a leukocytosis, say if they're unfit for chemotherapy and so on, you can actually add in oral chemotherapy or even the use of gemtuzumab, also gamacin. Right, for uh, leukocyte reduction during the induction phase. And the subsequent consolidation and maintenance, if you use it, could all be chemotherapy-free. So I think it's still, it's, it could be achieved even in high-risk patients with just brief chemotherapy or low-intensity chemotherapy. They do not need, routinely need uh, chemotherapy as such.